Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930, and today we're going to revisit Battlefield 1's expansion Turning Tides now that the last two maps that we were promised have finally been released. And these two maps are drastically different from the previous two maps I reviewed back in December. Instead of the large-scale infantry-focused combat, we're now seeing a much larger emphasis on naval warfare, with naval vehicles like battleships and torpedo boats being pushed to the center stage. There's still opportunity for infantry combat, but the map designs don't seem to lend themselves well to this. Both maps feature small land masses with very little cover, enough for only one team to hold a good position to capture an objective, meaning you're going to do a lot of island hopping in order to stay alive and be productive. So first, let's break these two maps down and figure out what battles they're supposed to represent. The first map I want to talk about is Heligoland Bight, one of the larger and more naval focus of the two maps. The Battle of Heligoland Bight, shown in the game, is based on the battle in 1914 between the British Grand Fleet and the smaller German High Seas Fleet. The British had only just entered the war a few weeks prior to this engagement, so this would be the very first naval engagement of the war. Assuming the British would blockade their ports, the Germans decided to hold strategic positions and wait to ambush British ships. The British, realizing that their new fuel requirements prevented them from holding strong positions around German ports, decided to hold back in a more defensive position. Eventually, the British were able to track a pattern in German patrol movement near Heligoland Bight, and planned an ambush that resulted in significant German naval losses, including several destroyed cruisers and a destroyer. The battle was a major victory for the British forces, despite some poor communication, and it resulted in Germans being more conservative about their naval activity, which arguably cost the Germans valuable naval control. The two islands featured in the map don't appear to have seen any infantry-based action in 1914. This was likely just put in the game to appeal to gamers that aren't fans of the naval warfare, which is understandable considering naval combat, while seemingly cool, is pretty lackluster in this game. The map itself is wide open, with two islands surrounded by plenty of open ocean. Most of the objectives sit on the largest island, which features some tall, inaccessible mountains in addition to several beaches and trench lines. The smaller island features an objective on land, surrounded by a few trenches and bunkers, and another objective on the beach, on board a wrecked ship in the water. I found a lot of infantry-based combat on the beaches near objectives C, D, and E, along with plenty of sniper fire coming from the smaller island across the water. Objective F is isolated and difficult to reach without a vehicle, making them likely more of a focus for players using naval vehicles. In general, the map is decent, but not the best. If you're big into naval or even aerial warfare, then this has some great potential, but it's a very basic design and I seriously don't see the reason why it needed an extra month to be released. There's definitely a sense of epicness on the beaches under the right circumstances, with airships exploding overhead, massive battleships fighting it out, and large infantry firefights along the rocky beaches. But the overall design is very simple when compared to previous maps. In fact, it reminds me a lot of maps from games like Battlefield 1942. Next we have Zeebrugge, which is based on the 1918 raid in Belgium. The raid was conducted by the British Grand Fleet to disrupt a major German U-boat base of operations. The battle took place on April 23, 1918, and the British sustained heavy losses. The primary objective was to aid three blocker ships loaded with concrete into the mouth of the canal to prevent Germans from sending their submarines out. In order to do this, the British needed to secure a mile-long mole that blocked their path to the canal entrance due to its heavily fortified defensive positions. They attacked at night by dispersing smoke screens and then docking the Vindictive alongside the mole itself. However, the British didn't realize that a German destroyer had docked the night before on the opposite side of the mole, and they ended up firing at each other at near point-blank range. The British troops were cut down as they tried to get off the Vindictive and onto the mole, and German reinforcements from the mainland were already on their way. The British had actually planned for this though, and sent a decommissioned submarine loaded with explosives into the viaduct that connected the mole to the mainland. The crew members were killed, but the submarine detonated successfully, cutting off any chance of German ground reinforcement. Despite the attack on the mole not going as planned, the British still managed to successfully distract the fortified positions long enough to escort two out of the three blocker ships into the canal. The British sustained heavy losses, and the HMS North Star was destroyed. While the British did succeed in their primary objective, it was a short-lived victory, as the high tide enabled the Germans to resume submarine patrols through the canal only a week later. Now the map itself is another nighttime map, which is great as there never seems to be enough of these in Battlefield games, and I personally really like them. Again, the focus here is mostly on naval warfare, but thanks to the massive mole in the center of the map, there's much more opportunity for some infantry combat. This is unfortunately the weakest part of the map. The lanes are way too small, and there's hardly any room to maneuver. 
You can either run from a box to a small pile of dirt in the middle of gunfire, or take your chances up high on the upper walkway where everybody can see you and shoot you down. Your only chance in this map is to move with a large group of friends, preferably medics, and continuously flank from the staircases along the side behind enemy lines. You're going to have a difficult time holding strategic positions thanks to the artillery from naval ships and frequent aircraft bombing raids. There's also a large mass of land near Alpha Objective, but since most of the objectives are focused in the center along the mole, most of the combat is probably going to be focused there too. There's also a few new tools of the trade in this update. We have the promised new C-Class Airship, which functions like a mini airship L-30 with four positions including a driver's seat. Unlike the Behemoth Airship, the C-Class can actually change altitude and also has two vehicle packages available, an observer package equipped with frag bombs and naval mines, or the Raider package that has demolition bombs and a spotting camera which can be used to easily spot enemies for your team. The L-Class Destroyer also returns and is much more prominent than it was in the Gallipoli map last month thanks to the open waters and potential for large destroyer versus destroyer combat. They can be taken out pretty easily with torpedoes from small torpedo boats, but at the same time they can very easily destroy attacking boats thanks to the Torpedo Boat Destroyer package. And finally, it's important to note that this update is the first time we get to see Behemoth vs Behemoth gameplay. In the map Heligal Land Bight, both teams have access to dreadnoughts allowing for some massive naval warfare, and plenty of naval bombardments on the beaches. And that seems to be just about everything in this new update. Please correct me in the comments below if I missed something, but that was everything I could find from playing and looking through some of the basic patch notes. Overall, I think this is a cool addition to an ever-growing game, but I'm not quite sure the extra month's wait was warranted considering the shallow amount of content in these two new maps. Both maps are simplistic in design, and while they finally give you a chance to experience naval warfare, it just seems like it would get old pretty quickly when compared to the naval warfare that was in Battlefield 4, or even Battlefield 1942. I hope I'm wrong though, and I end up loving these maps, but thankfully, it shouldn't matter long because DICE announced that the final expansion will be coming in the next month and will feature the Battle of the Somme, the biggest skirmish in World War I, and a battle that I can't believe they held back from us until the very end of this game's life cycle. But anyway, I hope this review was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more content posted every week.